shall return, uh, we discovered that we have to go through some things before we get to where God would have us to be. And so uh, we have to be mindful of the fact that persecution is a part of our spiritual walk. Uh, persecution can be defined on many different levels, uh, can come through many different sources, through many different people and situations and circumstances. One thing we have to understand is the moment that you declare Jesus as Savior and Lord, then the kingdom of God yeah. begins to suffer violence. Yeah. And the violent take it by force. force. But we as the people of God do not retaliate by force. Our defender, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Our defense, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Our protector, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Our protection, Amen. his name is Jesus. Jesus. And so we don't have to engage uh, these spirits in a violent way. We learn through the word of God that when spirits come against you, you learn how to talk to them. And you use the name of Jesus. Yes, and yes. you put the devil in check. That's right. That's right. Amen. Too often we engage in spiritual fisticuffs, if you will. That's none of our business. <laughs> All right. If the devil's not coming against you, he already owns you. All right now. That's right. I said if the devil is not coming against you, Come on. then he already yes, owns you. Yes, he does. You. That's right. Amen. That's right. So when you belong to Jesus, the devil will always come to attack you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come he comes on. through people. Ah. Yes. Right. Tell the truth. He comes through things. Mm -hmm. He comes through situations mm -hmm. and circumstances. Yes. Yeah. He'll come to attack you through your own thoughts, mm -hmm. through your own mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on now. He yes. seeks yes. to drive you batty. Come on. Cool. That's right. Insane. Crazy. Because he knows. And if he can get your mind staying off of Jesus, come on, come on now. Then you will not experience peace. That's right. Come on. The only peace that we have is in Christ. Mm -hmm. If your mind is not staying on Christ, then you will not enjoy the peace that He ordained for you. That's right. And for me. Mm -hmm. And so we must learn to not be so worked up when the enemy begins to work against us and begins destroying Hi. things in our lives. Come on now. come on. He'll come against you, but you have to know what time it is. That's right. Come or on. you'll find yourself frustrated and wasting energies yeah, yeah. fighting a battle that you can't win. That's right. Hi. You cannot beat the devil. No, you can't. Only Jesus can. That's right. Come on. Mm -hmm. So you try you uh, and yourself trying to defeat the devil and himself through just you, you will lose every time. Amen. But when you learn to put the battle in the hands of Jesus, yes. Yes. you, you will be victorious every time. Even when it seems like you are lo losing because we know that all things work Come together yes. for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. purpose. So we know that. And so we seek uh, to be obedient to the word of God. We seek to do what God instructs us to do because that's our peace. Amen. Obedience to Christ makes all of the difference. Now, 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 you've got to learn that that this walk involves suffering. Yeah, yeah, that's right. suffering. Uh -huh. Is not confined to one area of our experiences in life. Mm -hmm. That's right. There are a whole lot of areas in our lives that could possibly bring about suffering. So we learn how to neglect ourselves 
to bring our flesh under subjection. That's right. To we get to the place where spiritually we're not lusting after ungodly things, ungodly relationships, ungodly situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we come to appreciate the fact that God always has our backs. You have to know that. Mm -hmm. So when the enemy comes against you, when you understand the word of God, you get excited when he attacks you. That's right. Come on. So Peter tries to help us with this in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse Number 18 will begin. 1 Peter 2 and 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Now this is helping us to establish a frame of mind that is going to enable us to have a more peaceful walk in Christ as we encounter problems in our lives. And so, uh, uh, in our world, here in these United States, in our culture, our masters would be our supervisors at work. Our masters would be those who, who wield any kind of uh, authority over us. And, and so, the instruction uh, that Peter gives um, is not depowering, but it is actually empowering. Because it's telling you be subject to your masters with all fear. Now, when you're subject to authority with all fear, then you take out the equation, the burden of deciding what you should or should not do. Because you've learned to be subject. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, to those who are not so nice to you. You learn how to be subject to them and, and be when you're conforming to the word of God and you are subject. It takes the confusion out of your mind. See, because you don't have to sit and think about should I, should not. No. You know what you should and should not do. Now one thing we don't understand is this, is that when you learn how to deal with people who are above you, guess what? They learn to respect you. What happens, and oftentimes in our lives, the reason we encounter such difficulty at work, if you will, is because we've not learned ourselves how to be respectful. When you're saying you shouldn't always go to work with conflict, I said when you're saying you shouldn't always go to work with conflict, yeah. Conflict is not for the people of God. That's conflict right. is for the devil. That's right. Amen. God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Some folks say, oh, I go to work, I'll, I'll talk about Jesus. Wait a minute, your job didn't hire you to come. Right. Hmm. right. Amen. To they hired you to come and do the job. That's right. In the course of you doing the job, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience, in the course of you performing your duties, people will discover who you are in Christ. That's right. Yeah, they won't come speaking in tongues and and wanting to come kick your church doors down, but they will seek you out for counsel when you walk in a godly way. Not because you run your mouth. Not because that's the guy who's always talking about Jesus. Because most often ones always talking about Jesus, they live the least like him. All right. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't work with many folks who come to, come to, uh, came to work with religious agendas and were the biggest devils in the world. Yeah. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it'll show you don't have to wear a sign on your back. You don't have to make the announcement to the world. Just live holy. That's right. When you live godly, people will see the Christ in you. And so we first have to establish a, a, a baseline of respect. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. And so the the problem here was that the church was suffering for the name of Jesus. See, today folks say they're saved and they're suffering, but they're suffering because they're messy. They're suffering because they're uh, busybodies. They're suffering because they're mean and nasty. They're suffering for a plethora of reasons, but not because of Jesus. See, because 
One thing about it, culturally, we're in a different place. The government in these United States does not persecute the church, but people do. Yeah. We receive more persecution from church people than we do from the government. There's more persecution from church people than there is from folks who don't go to church. Yes. And so our, our greatest challenge is to endure uh, applicable to, to today's church to, here in our culture is to endure uh, uh, the attacks that, that are against us from those within. See, the greatest threat to the church today is within the church, not from without the church. Yeah, yeah. But it's people who call themselves of God and compromise every imaginable or real standard of holiness to accommodate their own personal agendas. Uh, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering, wrongfully. So yeah. you're not guilty, but you're suffering. They accuse you of it, but you didn't do it. They, they said you said it, but you didn't say it. And man, I've been misunderstood. I've been misquoted before. It doesn't matter to me. Man, I, I, I've been misunderstood. I've said things and people took it the wrong way. Well, I'm, I can't run that down. Especially when they don't mean any, you any good anyway. That's right. So they may walk away and talk about you, criticize you, scandalize your name. That's between them and God, not between you and them. So you learn to leave it alone. Uh, we, we endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you shall do well and suffer it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. And so, you know, when you're, when you're talked about because you're guilty, well, that's just, that goes with the territory, right? So that's no big deal because you were guilty and they said you were, they, they caught you and that's no big deal. The question is, can you endure when they falsely accuse you? That's right. So to, to prove that Jesus in you, when they come against you talking crazy, look crazy, your family turn their backs on your friends, turn their backs on you, everybody who you ever thought cared about you, loved you, when you, when you proclaim the name of Jesus, they turn their backs on you. Even church people, who, who once said they wanted you to be saved and live holy, but then when the Lord filled your Holy Ghost, they got mad and didn't appreciate the fact that you were no longer in the gutter that you were in. And so they'd rather oh, no. see you mess up right. than see you fix up. Truth. And when God starts working on you and cleaning you up and making you better and making you clean and holy and righteous and change your mind and your lifestyle and your dress and everything, where you go, what you do, what you say, then they get upset. These are folks who say that they're saved. They say that they are quote unquote unquote Christians. And they become angry because you no longer engage in sin. They rather see you living in sin so they can have something to talk about. Come on now. Or they can feel so they can lord uh, uh, over you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are people in church who think they're more saved than you. And they can't stand when you're really saved. I, I was in we were in the store today and I heard this woman talking to this uh, this older woman, she had to be probably in her 50s or 60s, talking to these young folks like they were in their late teens, early 20s, talking about a church. I don't know what the church was, but somehow the pastor of the church died, and the, the, the pastor's wife is still living. But the new pastor does not have a wife. And so they called the, the, the deceased pastor's wife the first lady. She ain't no first lady. How is that? Now, first of all, she doesn't go to that church. It really is none of her business. Right. And it's the devil who goes to church. So you know what that devil said? Well, I'm going to have to make it dead myself to see it. Now that's the pure devil. You understand? That's none of her business what's going on at that church. So what they want to call her the first lady? Big deal. Her husband was the pastor. And, and they're apparently, uh, el she's an elderly woman. And there's a young man who's taken over the church as the pastor. He's not married. And so it is. He calls her the first lady. Well, she's the mother of the church. <laughs> so she, it's none of you. I, don't, I have no idea who she was talking about. All I know, you don't go there, and the two young people don't go to that church either. I think one of your mother visited there or something, but it's none of your business. But it's the foolishness in church. Yeah, amen. In church. Yeah, amen. Worrying about stuff that's none of your business. Who the first lady is, that is none of your business. All right, that's right.
She's worried about that church. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to go up there myself and see it. Man, people crazy. Yeah. They call themselves people All right, uh, now. of God. It's not terrible. But if he suffer for righteousness and say, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So you, you know that you're doing what God instructs. Don't be afraid of their terror. Don't be, don't be troubled. Don't be discouraged because they're coming against you. You ought to be happy. Happy are ye. Y'all read that? But if he suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. When you're suffering for righteousness sake, don't ever be sad about that. Amen. When I get church folks who reject me because of what I preach, I don't get mad. Come on. Come on now. Well, you preach against sin. That's right. Yeah. That's what God called us to do. To that's preach right. against sin. Amen. To preach against the thing that's keeping us out of heaven and taking us to hell. That's, that's right. sin. Amen. And so uh, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy uh, to be rejected. I'm happy to be uninvited. I'm happy uh, 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 to be forgotten, to be that invisible preacher right. in their midst. It makes me feel good. I know why you're rejecting me. You think I'm going to get sad because I'm rejected? All because I'm wedded to the truth of God? No, that would be a grave mistake. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks that you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And so all we got to do is, is, is there are people who really want to know about Christ. Yeah. And when you shut your mouth and live holy, they see the Christ in you. Opportunity will, will occur where they will be able to ask you a question. Well, they will have to, for some reason, come to seek counsel, guidance, advice, comfort from you. And it's not, and then it's not about us launching into now. I have to become the teacher, the counselor, the advisor. No, shut your mouth. That's right. Just live holy. Amen. That's right. And do what the Bible says. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you. Of the hope. Now the hope that's in you, his name is Jesus. With meekness and fear. And so we don't, we don't start boasting and look, I'm, I'm saving you, ain't so. No, with meekness and fear. So you've got to be careful because sometimes we become a little too uh, boastful uh, in this thing. And we start talking to folks, and we'll start making it about us and not about Christ. Mm -hmm. See, because I start telling you about how saved I am and all this. No, when I when I when I testify about how God has changed me, it's not to it's not to promote me, but it's to promote Christ and for the world to see that Jesus moved me from a place of filth to a place of cleanliness in Him. Not to glorify myself, not to try to make somebody think that I'm more saved. Look at, look at me. I, I don't do what other people do. No, no. It's, it's to be able to testify of the goodness of Jesus Amen. and say, you know what, I once was, but look at me now. It's not because of me, it's because of Jesus. Amen. Yes, that's the hope in me, the Jesus, the hope in Jesus in me, the Jesus in you is the hope of glory. Yes, Lord. So Amen. we have to be able to testify. Of the hope that abides on the inside of us. Yes, yes. Not to talk about ourselves, but to talk about Jesus, who is our hope with meekness and fear. We have to reverence him as we talk about him. Too many folks that are saved in their, their testimony, the preachers, their, their preaching is about them, it's not about Jesus. It's not about how many cars I have, how many houses I have, how what I have, this I have, that. No, it's about Jesus. Come on, come on. Yes. I remember I used to sleep under the bridge. But God bless me now. I live in a five-bedroom, 5,000 square foot home. That's great. Come on. Look what Jesus did for me. Yes, Jesus. I ain't got to go through my house now and start telling everything I have. No. Real simple. Here's where I was. Here's where I am. But I didn't do it. Jesus did it. My hope. He's the one who took care of this. He's the reason I can testify 
of the things, the good things that have happened in my life. Not because I'm so great, so wonderful, so awesome, so smart, so wise, so brilliant, but because of Jesus. Now, when we learn to testify of Jesus, we'll win souls to him. But when we make it about us, folks will come follow us, not because of Jesus, because they think we're going to get what we have. Man, if I come, I'll come up too. I'll do better too. I'll get more too. Wrong reason for coming. That's right. But that's our fault because we're showing people stuff instead of showing people Christ. Amen. That's right. We want folks to come through the churches and see how beautiful the building is. What about how beautiful the lives of the people in the church are? That's right. right. Come on now. Come on. That's it. That's the truth. So people can't see Christ in us because we're too busy trying to promote ourselves and promote our material possessions. That's right. Thank God he blessed with a new house. He got six bedrooms and 12 bathrooms. Well, okay, well, what was that glorifying God? Not You're not thinking God, you're bragging. That's right. Come on. You share that faith, thank God. God, you know what, now, now, now turn it around. You know, we got a family, we got 10 people in our family. And God blessed us. We were in a two bedroom, one bath home. And y'all know that was impossible. But God blessed us. Now we've got six bedrooms. Okay, you're not gonna look what God did. We were all packed in, but we kept doing God's business. And God blessed us. Well, what is the message? The message there is that if you take care of God's business, God will take care of yours. Right. It's not about look how great we are. Come see our mean house. We're so wonderful now. Now we walk around with our chest out. No. But people can't see Christ in the church because the church is so materialistic. We're preoccupied. We're trying to impress folks that we're something great. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It is not about what we have. It is about Jesus. It also is not about what we don't have. It is about Jesus. When our testimonies, well, the information we share is always about our own condition. We're not then promoting Jesus. Well, I, I, I you know, I wish I had. Stop! Give God thanks for what you have. Right. If you can't think of nothing else other than he woke you up this morning, kept you on last night, mm -hmm. I got food, clothes, roof over my head. Thank God! Amen. Amen. That's it. Well, you know, my bush I had more. Stop. It's God's praise. Amen. Not time to build it and complain about what we don't have. Not time to brag about what we have. But to give God thanks. Amen. Because anytime you talk to somebody about Jesus, when you leave, they shouldn't be thinking about you. They ought to be thinking about Jesus. If you leave and they're so stuck on you, and y'all understand what I'm talking about. Not because they were so impressed with you, but they were impressed with your conversation. And your conversation talked about your hope. And your hope, his name is Jesus. Jesus. And so by the time you stop talking to them, you deposit hope into them. Amen. Jesus, the hope of Jesus. glory. That's Amen. Right. And you make a deposit. So now they're, they're emboldened in Christ. Why? Because of your conversation. But thank you, Father, Lord God, in your heart to be ready always to give an answer to every man that has with you a reason of the hope that is in you with weakness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. And so let them falsely accuse you, uh, but when they see the God in you, it will affect their conscience. And your conversation will never turn on them. Your conversation will always be about the goodness of the Lord. Now, there you got to understand, and this is not Bible study, but, uh, but I'm always teaching, so <laughs> same thing. you got to understand this, is that we don't, we don't put up with the devil's a mess. That's not what Peter's saying here. Okay, not saying toy with the devil. No. He's saying when, you're, when people come against you as a result of righteousness, 
rejoice. That's it. And you can win them by shutting your mouth and keeping a smile on your face. See? Remember when they unjustly imprisoned Paul? I think it was Paul and Silas. Or Paul and Barnabas. Yeah. Barnabas. One of them in jail said. When they beat them. And uh, not when, not when the, the jail cell shook, when they shook, not then, but we, uh, when they beat the brethren and Paul, they, the jailer came to Paul and said, they said, you could, we told them to let you go because they discovered that he was a Jew and he was a Roman uh, citizen. And Paul told them, we ain't going nowhere. Let them come. They beat, they beat me unjustly. I am a Roman citizen and you don't whip a Roman citizen. So let them come. See, there's something called spiritual indignation. No, no, they were wrong. They were wrong. So let them come and face us. Don't send a representative. Of course, he, he, you know, he pleaded with them, please, you know, just go on, y'all. No, I'm not playing with the devil. See, God, God, you know, Jesus said, if they take your coat, give them your cloak too. But that doesn't mean somebody come and take your car, take your house, and you're going to say, all right, take it. No, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. There are people, who, there's somebody who's cold and need it, took the coat, now they, they, now they want your cloak. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, if you're cold and I'm cold, and I, I can deal because I trust God, I'll give you the coat. Understand? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you just go let folks take stuff from you because the right. Bible said, do they take that of heaven? No, that's not what the Bible means. Come on. Come Let him say that. Right. Understand? But, but when it comes to our being persecuted, talked about, mm -hmm. for Christ's sake, we ought to be happy. Amen. Uh, is that all right? That's all right. Well, it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. If it be God's will, it's better that you suffer for uh, well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. And so Christ suffered, and he was without sin. He was without fault, right? Now, sometimes we suffer for things that we're not guilty of, but a whole lot of stuff we didn't suffer for that we were guilty of. So we don't have any, we don't have cause to complain. That's right. You got away with 99 things. You got a, 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 a false accuser of one thing, and you lose your mind. But wait a minute, you got away with 99 things. You forgot to give Come God on. thanks because you were not persecuted Come or on. prosecuted for those 99. That's right. So one thing comes up and now you're ready to, to, to burn the world down. Mm -hmm. Now that's people of God. That's right. Come on. Remember, Christ suffered, so you got to arm yourself. Likewise. 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 Hey, that's what's going to happen. The world is going to come against you because they hate you. They hate him. Mm -hmm. And if he's in you, guess who they hate? They hate you. You ought to be happy that they hate you. Amen. That's so right. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4 and 12, said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. The fiery trial, mm -hmm. which is to try you. Don't think it strange. Yeah, yeah. Something strange happened to you. Amen. No, there's a fiery trial that comes to try you. That's right. That's just the truth of the matter. That's our reality living on this earth. Now, whatever that trial is, it's people. It could be your health. Mm -hmm. It could be your finances. It could be a lot of different things. It could be your church. And I do mean your quote unquote church experience. It could be a lot of different things. But whatever that, whatever that thing is, Peter encourages us, beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So when we're suffering for the name of Christ, we ought to be happy. Well, you know, I'm an unemployed because I won't work just any job. Somebody presented an opportunity to me that was just dishonest. I could have made money, but it would be dishonest. Right. It would be ungodly, unholy, unrighteous. It would interfere with my walking with Christ. So I said no. But I'm going to suffer for that because I could have had that money. But I'm not going to complain. That's right. Come on. That's a fiery trial. Yeah, it is. That's a fiery trial. Yes, it is. Yeah. 
Well, your family rejected you because you decided you weren't going to dress like the world anymore. You weren't going to go where they go and do what they do. They criticize you. Mm -hmm. Fire a child. Yeah, yeah. That's Folks right. who you love most seem to turn their backs on you. Come on, come on now. It's not you. They don't like the Jesus in you. That's right. So you ought to be happy that they see the Jesus in you and hate him. Mm -hmm. right. Come on. Because the world said the world loved their own. His own. So if the world loves its own, then that means it hates you That's if right. you belong to Jesus. Right. Huh? Amen. Y'all follow me? Amen. Amen. But rejoice in as much as you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Not just with joy, but with exceeding joy. When his glory shall be revealed, you're going to experience exceeding joy. Well, I know what this past so much going against me. Shut up. Mm -hmm. I mean, shut up. Shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. When you open it, give God praise. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, this ain't going right. Why are you complaining? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. What about giving God praise? That's right. right. Thank you, Lord. What about that? Amen. See, because you're not the first one to suffer. And if the world keeps going on, you're going to be the last one. That's right. And this won't be your first time suffering. You're the last time suffering. That's right. So just, just accept the fact that some stuff's going to go against you. Mm -hmm. But again, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. purpose. Amen. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. Yes, yes. To be conformed to, to, be conformed to the image of his son that he yeah, made yeah. first born among many brethren. More whom he did whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Justified and also glorified. What shall we? If God be for us, if God be for us, if God be for us, so why are we complaining? Amen. What is that? I don't don't feel sorry for yourself. That's right. I don't. I, I, my body is not nearly what it used to be. I don't walk around feeling sorry for myself. Amen. And I get tired of sometimes I say not being what it used to be. I never feel sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I wish. I, no, I, I wish. But come on, why are we going to sit and not complain about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give God thanks in spite That's of right. it. In spite of it. Amen. That's right. Well, they don't work the way you say. That's all right. They still work. Amen. If it didn't work, you're still breathing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So why spend your time lamenting life? That's right. When you can spend all your time giving God praise. Mm -hmm. But you've got to understand the word of God to get there. That's right. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Well, the only reason you're going through what you're going through is because you turned your back on the devil. Mm -hmm. And when you turn your back on him, he kicks you in your hind parts. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's okay. But when he kicks you, he kicks you right into the arms of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So you kick me, devil. Keep kicking me. Every time you kick me, I'm going further, further away from you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to Jesus. That's if right. even reproach for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Isn't that something? Amen. You're being reproached because of Christ and the spirit of glory and of God is resting upon you. That's why you people think you should be frowning you wearing a smile. Right. Come on. It's the spirit of glory and of God resting upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. glorified. See, on their part, people love to accuse God. Now, now, see, people unbeknownst to most folks in church, a great 99% of us, we start talking crazy stuff like, God won't put no more on you than you can bear. So on their part, he is evil spoken of because they accuse him of putting stuff on them. God puts nothing on us. He cannot be tempted, neither tempted he any man. Uh -huh. According to James. So God doesn't put anything on you. Now that's speaking evil. And most of us do it out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. But that's speaking evil of God. Well, you know, God won't put no more in you can bear. God, God must have let, God must have given you that burden for a reason. Are you crazy? Come on. Come on. You think God's going to tempt me? Mm -hmm. He'll try me, but he won't tempt me. Mm -hmm. But his trying of me is always to prove me. Mm -hmm. Now, when you prove something, you make it better. You sure it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
doesn't do anything against us to tear us down. That's right. Oh, I ain't diagnosed with cancer, but the words that God won't put anymore. God didn't do that. Come on. Come on. So, Peter writes, uh, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So on your part, when they diagnose you, when they give the bad news, when they take this away, take that away, that, on your part, he's glorified. Because you remember, again, in everything, give thanks. give thanks. You remember that? In everything, give thanks. So in the midst of the bad news, in the midst of the disappointment, in the midst of all that, I cannot speak evil of my God. That's right. On your part, he is glorified. And so when you get in trouble, what you do? You worship. Amen. Why? Because he's glorified. Amen. I trust him. I believe in him. God can and God will. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Now, here's, here's a big deal. Too many folks who are pro professing to being saved are murderers, thieves, evildoers, busybodies. A whole lot of busybodies in the church. Yeah, yeah. Worried about everybody else. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to mind our own business. That's right. Yes, and, and I'm not talking about when you see your brother in the fault, you go, you know, you go and you address it. I'm not talking about that. That's not a busybody. Because you're concerned about their soul, not about trying to straighten them out. Mm -hmm. See, if I come to you trying to straighten you out, no, 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 no. If I see you in a fault, I come to you with the spirit of, of redemption. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to, not to try to make myself look greater than you, more saved than you, because you failed, you made a mistake, and now I'm a, I'm a lord over you. No. 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 Mm -mm. No, we don't want to be evildoers. We'll do people in, in Jesus' name. We destroy people trying to prove them that we're closer to God than they are. No, it's not God's will. Busybody. So many busy. So many. See, I don't worry about folks in my business because I don't get in anybody else's business. business. That's right. That's right. So if one has an opinion concerning my business, mm -hmm. I could care less mm -hmm. because their opinion means nothing to me. That's right. Because I'm not in anybody's business. Mm -hmm. Come on. See? Come so on. I don't carry a chip on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Huh? There's nothing to read because I'm not walking around trying to get in your right. business. In fact, I tell folks, I don't want you to know your business. And folks get mad because they want to tell me their business. I don't want to know your business. It's none of my business between you and God. That's right. I'm not trying to know your business so I can, so I can try to show you that I'm so, some great uh, knowledge uh, from God to solve all your problems. I don't need to know your business. Because if you tell me all of your business and God can't use me to help you. That's right. Because you told me your business. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. I tell my wife, don't tell me everything. I'll tell you that. Too. Don't tell them. Let me stay ignorant. Because mm -hmm. then the Holy Ghost can use me. If I hear everything, God can't use me. I'm cluttered. But I have no problem. When I wasn't saved, I wasn't a busy guy. So I'm not studying your business. You mind your business. Too many busybodies in the church. Come on. And everybody else's business. Now, because you talk about sin doesn't mean you're in anybody's business. Right? When the Lord used me, I love to get folk. Then I love yeah. to be a busybody That's in right. Jesus' name. That's right. I don't know what you did, what you said, what you, I, all I know is that God's going to get you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not to hurt you, he's going to get you to help you, to, 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 to uh, correct you. Mm -hmm. But then if you reject him, he's going to get you, tear you down. Beat your honey. Now, if you're hard headed, so we got too many busybodies in the church. What pass on? Whoa, you're a busybody. How in the world are you going to instruct the pastor on anything? You are out of order 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. If the pastor's dead wrong, the pews don't correct the pastor. That's right. You are a busybody. 
But he had to get up and say, You're a busy by none of your business. That's right. Come on. Well, she testifying into you're a busybody. So the church is in trouble. That's why people don't want to go to church. Mm -hmm. Everybody's messy. Mm -hmm. Not here. That's right. We won't have it here. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Now you kill mess if you kill secrets. That's right. That's right. See, the Bible talks about chambering. Too much chambering in the church. Too many clandestine meetings in the church. Too many secrets in the church. Mm -hmm. Backroom deals in the church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no buddy system. No inner circle. That's right. No, no, we tight. So we know mm -mm, none of that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fair game for righteousness. Yes, yes. When the, when the hammer comes through the house, it starts up here. Yeah. And it goes all around the church. No inner circle. That's right. No buddies. No busybodies. That's right. It's inappropriate. That's right. It is. They have busybodies. Yes, it is. Running around the church, mm -hmm. talking to people of God. No. No, 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 no. But we have too many busybodies in the church. In other men's matters. Mind your own. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So if you're suffering because you're a busybody, you know, folks say, hey, brother, everybody talk, wait a minute, you're on your mouth too. It's amazing how the folks who complain the most about being talked about are the ones who talk the most. Because they're the ones who can't take it. You, you got something about everybody else. In the moment somebody said one little thing about you, you ready to fight. You can dish it. But you can't take it. So if you're suffering because you're messy, you're suffering because you're practicing sin, you're suffering because you're acting like the devil, that's not suffering for Christ's sake. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yeah. It's that time. It is. Judgment must begin at the house of God. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now, simply means this, is that judgment, people form opinions. And the first evaluation has to begin with those who say they are Christians. They are like Christ. Mm -hmm. Folks have to be able to look at us and have an opinion because they're going to. You have to make sure that if their opinion is negative, uh, and if it's negative in terms of sinful, that you're not guilty. Mm -hmm. So our lives have to be open books. Mm -hmm. So as I always say, when folks say they say to me, you can't judge me, they don't know the word. Come on. Because my question is what you have to hide. Mm -hmm. Too many secrets. Too many secrets Amen. in church. You want to get in trouble? Keep a lot of secrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You keep a lot of secrets. See, because you have a lot of secrets, you start doing sneaky things. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you start doing sneaky things. Sneaking will get you in trouble. Yeah, it will. You can't sneak around. It will get you in trouble. If what you're doing is fine with God, why are you trying to hide it from man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Don't be, don't do undercover stuff. Amen. Because then it becomes low down because you have bad intentions. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? Amen. Then you have bad intentions. And the end of that story is death. Mm -hmm. Spiritually dead. Done. All because we're trying to run game on God and live in one lifestyle in front of the people mm -hmm. in another lifestyle out of the presence of the people. But guess who's always there? God is always there. He sees Amen. everything. That's right. So why do we confuse ourselves, deceive ourselves in thinking that we can pull one over on God? For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. This, it begins with us, y'all. So your lifestyle has to be holy. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, it's hard enough for us 
as obedient children to the gospel of God. But those who are disobedient to the gospel of God, judgment is going to kill them. They're trying to kill you for, for living righteously. So what do you think the end is going to be for those who live unrighteously? Come on. Those who are ungodly. Yeah. Oh, well, let's just go to the next verse. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. where shall the ungodly end and the sinner appear? Mm -hmm. If the righteous scarcely be saved. My Lord, come on. Remember now, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy yes, yes, yes. See? But we have to remember this. Man sees what we do. Mm -hmm. Man hears what we say. Man knows how we live. And so as people of God, the onus is on us to represent God and to present him in the proper way. He is holy, so our lifestyles must be holy. Amen. Period. Holy in the church, holy outside of the church. That's right. Y'all hear me? Amen. You, can't, you can't be saved and live a secret life of sin. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't. I can't be saved and send filthy text messages, mm -hmm. filthy emails, mm -hmm. uh, filthy communication, and I say that I'm saved. Yes. Right. Just can't right. do it. I'm saved. So when I when I started dating my wife. I wasn't trying to be nothing, do nothing secretive. Girl, I'm, I'm going to marry you. I'm not dating you to date you. I'm dating you to marry you. <laughs> I was looking for a girlfriend. I wanted a wife. That's right. Understand? So if you start sneaking around, then you've got to keep sneaking right. around. That's right. Right? Amen. But if you know your intentions are honest and pure and, and above board, then you don't sneak around. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? There's no sneaking. There's no. We don't have to have no no secret to come other than some busybody that's none of their business. <laughs> no, busybodies ain't none of their business. That's right. But I'm not gonna have. I'm not gonna let you make me sneak around. That's right. How about that? That's mm -hmm. right. So I'm gonna live openly so that folks can somebody can look at me and say, you know what? I love the way you went about that. Mm -hmm. But they can see Christ in you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now everything you do, you're trying to be slick and sneaky and carrying on. Okay, what are they going to say? Somebody's sneaky. Now who trusts a sneaky person? No one. First, the first question is what they have to hide. Right? But when we allow the world to see Christ in us, the hope of glory, then we live more comfortable, pleasant, lives in Christ. And now you go through your day without being frustrated. Because, you know, when you have a lot of secrets, you're working all day to be slick, mm -hmm. and it can frustrate you. Mm -hmm. Well, ain't nothing to oh, ain't nothing business. What you worry about that for? Mm -hmm. I don't care if people have opinions about me. Mm -hmm. I could care less about that. That doesn't affect me. That's right. My wife reminded me of something this evening. <laughs> That happened years when I first started pastoring. A lot somebody told me. I said, okay, that kind of stuff. I forget it, but that stuff's so stupid. It didn't even affect me. I could care less about that. That was when, when I first started pastoring. A lot. Just a flat out lie. I don't know who told the lie, the one who brought it or the one who they said said it. But either way, it was still a lie. Amen. But, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing I can do about that. As long as I know that it's a lie, leave it a lie. Because it's a lie. Why would I chase a lie? Hmm. I have nothing to straighten out. It's a lie. <laughs> so there's nothing for me to correct because it's not true. Understand? In fact, they were silly. It was silly, stupid. You see how a mess. And this is stay out of you. You get in mess, mess is getting you. Mm -hmm. And the reason people get in mess. Because mess is in them. That's right. What's on the inside comes out. And it shows on the outside. So we're seeking to be like Christ. So don't think it's strange 
when you're oppressed, when you're talked about, when you're ignored, when you're disappointed, when folks tell you one thing and do another, don't think it's strange. Yeah, don't, yeah. Why do you get frustrated? Yeah. Don't get frustrated. Well, you said you were. Why are you worried about that? Leave it alone. Mm -hmm. How many folks tell me things that don't follow through? Mm -hmm. Can't let that phase me. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Does not matter. What matters is that when I make a promise, I keep my word. Amen. What matters is that I am not a busy body. Amen. What matters is that I am not a murderer. What matters is that I am not a thief. Yes, yes. What matters is that I am not an evil doer. Yes. Now that matters. That's right. Yes, it does. I'm responsible for myself. Mm -hmm. Save yourself from this untoward generation. generation. Yeah, yeah. But don't think it's strange. Things start humming around you. That's what always goes to me first. Mm -hmm. Don't think it's strange. You can't get all worked up because it starts crumbling around you. Mm -hmm. You've got to give God thanks always. Amen. Give God thanks. Amen. And let the world see the Christ in you. Right, man? You, mm -hmm. you know what, you know what, man? I watch you the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you never once complained. Oh. All the stuff that happened to you, man, and you never once frowned. You never, you were never sad. I never heard you complain. All I see, all I saw you do was smile. That was your testimony. They saw the hope of glory Amen. manifested through your conversation, through your living. That's the key. It's not what we say only, yes, yes. but it's what we do most of all. That's and right. part of it is what we say, but it's what you do, how you live. People see the Christ in you. Yes, they do. But you got you got to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. You can't get frustrated because stuff's not working against you. Listen here. If my family, my friends, my husband, my wife, my children, my mom, my dad, whomever, if they turn against me because I'm determined to stand on righteousness, bye-bye. That's right. Now, I'm not talking about because you started beating everybody with the gospel. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about because you got saved now by the devil, so you're going to all your family send everybody to hell. You're going, no, 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 you're, you're dead wrong. Mm -hmm. Come on. There's no Christ in that. That's right. Every time you see your family members, you criticize them. You know you need to be saved. You stop them. Let's leave it alone. You did. Mm -hmm. So there's no Christ shining out of you because you're not trying to present Christ to them. Mm -hmm. Trying to show them how, how good you are now. Mm -hmm. Not about Christ. Because if it were about Christ, then you wouldn't be criticizing. But you'd be so obsessed with them seeing Christ shine through you. Yes, yes, that's right. I can sit around y'all and y'all doing all that devilment and I can't, I'm not here by choice. I can't go anywhere else. I sit there, I'm not even phased. I'm not looking at y'all funny. You got your music playing, I'm not sitting like this. Sitting there. Just, that's all right, y'all smoking, acting the food. That's all right. And I can't, if I can leave, I'm gone. Yes. But I can't leave for whatever reason. Sometimes you can't go anywhere. Just sit there. I'm not frowning. No, smile. What am I, I frowning about? Mm -hmm. I'm going to frown because the devil's acting like the devil. Mm -hmm. Come on. That did make good sense. No, it doesn't. Come the on. devil acts like the devil. The devil. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to frown. I'm not going to let you control me like that. That's right. right. After the devil, I'm still smiling. Amen. Because I'm thinking about Jesus. I didn't even hear that music. Man. I didn't hear none of that. Man. <laughs> My mom was on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear about no booty and rum shaking. Mm -hmm. My mom was on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Did you hear? I said, hold on, no lot of times people say, "Did you?" I didn't hear. I didn't. I didn't hear no. Because I'm not looking for sin. Not in my daily walk. Mm -hmm. Not right. when I'm with the world. I'm looking for. I'm not looking for it because it's already there. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's there. I acknowledge that it's there, but I'm ignoring it because I'm keep my mind stayed on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I understand. Amen. So don't be. Fire trial comes, the king. Just relax. Yes, Lord. Relax. Let God have his way. Watch God Amen. do what he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you will see him manifest himself. And you'll be impressed. Mm -hmm. You'll be amazed. Mm -hmm. God, if I had said something during that conversation, that would have ruined everything. But because I kept my mouth shut, because I didn't do this thing, because I was silent, because it worked out. Because if I had said something, I would stir in it. But because I shut my mouth, 
it worked out. So now, they're coming to me, you know what? Man, I'm so sorry for what I did, for what I said. Right, right, right. Right, but if I had slapped you back, <laughs> I'm just uh, hey, listen here. This walk in Christ is not hard. If we remember this, it's not about us, but it really is about Jesus. Amen. I'm about proving it, and I keep saying this to Cornerstone. We we don't we stand in holiness. It's not to be bragging about look how saved we are, how holy we are. No. Right. We live what we live, we believe what we believe, we stand on it, we're comfortable, we're, we're, we're confident in it, that's it. But it's not to belittle anyone else or to, be, to, to uh, assume a posture of superiority. Right. No. No, because if you ever lose the spirit of a servant, then you've lost the spirit of Christ. So as my daddy used to say, I'm saved. To be misused, to be picked on, to be walked on, to be talked about. That's okay. We talked about Jesus. And he was never guilty. We've all been guilty. And are still guilty. But Jesus was never, ever guilty. That's right. Amen. But he never said a monkey word. He paid the ultimate price. They crucified him. But he never said a mumbling word. All he did was talk about you. And you ready to burn the house down. Come on out. That's the wrong spirit, isn't it? So leave, leave the mess alone. The fiery trial, they come. 